Hey, what's up everyone? I am Folygon, and in this video we are going to focus in on the process of blocking out a character. In my last few videos, I've been showing off my entire character creation process. You can check out my latest videos where I sculpted a baseball mage and did a pose study down at the links in the description. So this time around, we are focusing in on blockout. But first, we have to answer the question of what is blockout? Essentially, it's just the first third of the character creation process. You have your primary forms, your secondary forms, and your tertiary forms. Primary being what the blockout essentially is. Sometimes it's called your primary forms, right, like I just said, or even referred to as your foundation. Blockout is often considered the most important part of the sculpture process because it is the foundation on which everything moving forward is built. Essentially what that means is that if your foundation isn't strong, then no amount of details or cool textures later on will save a bad sculpt. So what does this process look like? Well, there are so many tools and techniques for going about creating the actual form, so I want to keep this a little more software agnostic, or even really medium agnostic, so everything I'm going to talk about you can do in any software or even physical medium. When I start the blockout process, I like to use simple primitive shapes. A lot of the time I'll continue appending spheres and cubes to represent different parts of my form. i found that it's really nice and fast to work this way, and it's very similar to what you would do in traditional sculpture. The main difference being that in digital, I don't have to combine all of these parts and pieces right away. Although I eventually will, of course. So I append all of these basic shapes and then I start, you know, mushing them about until I get somewhere that I like. <laughs> and while that's not entirely how it works, there are a ton of different things happening in the back of my head while I do this. There's anatomical knowledge, as well as just plain experience from doing something many times over and over. I have a mental library of shapes that I know I like and I know that look good and I'll pull from that as I experiment and try to create something new. Also, I am often looking at reference while I work as well. This time around, I just had Pinterest opened up on another monitor and I would occasionally flip through some anatomical images for inspiration. So this is a majority of what this process looks like for me. If I'm working from a specific concept from a client, which is often the case, then I have a very specific goal that I need to aim for. With this little sketch though, it's quite a bit different because I was kind of just playing around and trying to make something cool. Now whether I succeeded or not, I don't know, but I did have a lot of fun sketching this out. Blockout is the part of the process that I see people struggle with the most. I shouldn't say I don't know why that is because I know that blocking out and just sculpting in general is, you know, it's difficult. But I think a majority of people rush through this part of the process and don't pay enough attention to silhouette and fundamentals early on. Another part is that, well, like I said, sculpting is just very, very hard, and you have to put in a ton of hours to get to a semi-proficient level. I think people get discouraged because of how hard it is, and then end up moving forward too fast, and everything ends up looking worse, and then you end up getting even more discouraged, and as long as you're not blind enough to your own work, which is a whole nother discussion for a different video, you end up in this kind of cyclical situation where you're not happy with what you're doing, so you move forward and then you become even less happy and it's just, you know, a repetitive, repetitive process of unhappiness. So it's really hard, like I said, and I would love to see people start putting more time into this part of the process. Because if you do, eventually you'll get to a point where this isn't that difficult anymore and you can be a little more autopilot-y during the stage and even enjoy it sometimes, which I definitely do. Being good at creating primary forms is awesome because everything else is honestly just downhill from there. So after you have all the parts and pieces in there, then what? What is the next step? Well, typically I will refine my forms from there over several iterations, slowly combining parts of my character as I move forward. Typically I'll start by combining larger sections together until I have everything in the arms as one single mesh, everything in the legs are all together, then the torso, the head, etc. they all get their own little group as well. Once you start combining and blending your pieces, your objective is to continue refining while getting rid of that awkward robotic feel from the earlier stages. These shapes make things feel more like hard surface modeling than organic sculpting, which is nice in the early stages for figuring out your plane changes, but starts to make your figure feel more like a Gundam or a mech than an organic person as you move forward. So early on that's fine, but some smoothing and blending later on can help get rid of that robotic feel. And from here it's really a lot of the same thing. 
refinement, take a step back, look at everything as a whole, and continue to combine and refine from there. It's really important that you take that step back every now and again because it's so easy to get tunnel vision while you're working on one area, close up for a long time, then once you step back you realize that something looks way off or just doesn't fit everything else you've sculpted up to that point. That's when I like to make large proportional changes. This is something that's a bit harder to do in traditional mediums, that digital just outshines and can make this process so much easier. Personally, I lower my poly count and use masks to make large changes, typically using tools like Transpose Master. Proportions are such an easy thing to get wrong, especially when you're working on something that is stylized. Typically what I like to do is push a form to the breaking point, and then nudge it back just a little until it starts to work again. And this is something that I try to do with all of my forms. Exaggerate as much as I can without things looking completely stupid, and it's about finding balance or something. That sounds like something someone smart might say, right? <laughs> when I work on stuff like this character block out, I don't really have a super clear destination in mind. Sure, I have an idea, but it's more about practice and experimentation. Just doing this as an exercise I think is great. I definitely have a lot of fun doing this kind of thing, and I would love to see more people posting cool blockouts that they are working on. So what's the point of a blockout? Well, to review, it's to create the most basic form of what you're sculpting. It's to make your foundation. Without a foundation, you're going to struggle if you rush ahead. It's also great for working on your fundamentals. It's the thing I see people struggle with the most, and I think many could benefit from more practice in this area. And if you're absolutely insane like me, it can be a lot of fun to do this kind of stuff. Awesome! Well, I don't really have too much else to say here about character blockouts right now, so I think that's where we're going to leave it. If you are interested in learning more about fundamentals and character sculpting as a whole, check out my course, The Appeal Academy. It's not only a course that you can go through at your own pace while creating an awesome character through project-based assignments, but it's also a mentorship where I guide you every step of the way. You can find that as well as my other courses, brushes, etc. over on gumroad.com slash folygon. And of course, there's a link down below for that. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, maybe learned something new, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day.